Good morning, everybody. Uh, this talk is designed as, uh, shall we say, a bit of a, an introduction to the practical side of, of this field of distributional ecology. Which is to say, if you want to get into this seriously, what is the set of tools that you should um, assemble? Which is to say, programs and abilities that you need to master. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you kind of my opinion, um, and I hope that the the other instructors will chime in and and give you their opinions, give you their ideas about. Um, what are the crucial programs that you should have at your at your disposition? So I'm going to uh, show you a bit of a presentation. Um, and again, this is this is designed to be kind of a um, A basic set of abilities that you would ideally have. So let's let's go through this. And again, my my fellow instructors, uh, I welcome your critiques of this or your disagreements or whatever. Um, I think we'd all agree that niche modeling is a pretty complex undertaking. You'll remember the idea of the Hutchinsonian duality. That duality implies that you're going to have to work in both geographic space and environmental space. The geographic space is maps. So you can do this step probably most rigorously in a GIS program, but probably most efficiently in R. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, but you certainly need a way of looking at and manipulating and exploring maps. And then you also need to be able to manipulate and explore environmental spaces. And you have to remember that envir environmental spaces are tough. They can be very highly dimensional. And that means that they, you know, we, we see things very well in two dimensions and kind of well in three dimensions and really badly in four or five or 10 dimensions. And so there's a lot of, of there are a lot of challenges for how you would go about um, exploring e-space effectively. And then perhaps most scary or most daunting is that there's no single platform. And so you're gonna have to assemble a suite of tools that work together uh, to fulfill your needs. And they need to be tools that work for you, either with your abilities, or with your infrastructure or what have you. Okay, so I made this summary of kind of two sets of tools. One are the ones that are critical and crucial. You basically can't work without these tools. And the other is um, tools that would be useful to have. And I'm kind of the poster child for this because um, I never learned R, and that means that I, I uh, literally am stranded in a field that is advancing very rapidly without me. And to do any work, I pretty much have to beg my, um, my dear and noble students to bail me out and help me with analyses. Um, so those of you who are still students, Learn this ability, learn to at least be able to um, use packages and such efficiently in R, because otherwise you're gonna find yourself kind of standing by the side of the road watching the cars go by and you are not gonna be having any fun. Believe me, um, that's where I am. So let's, let's go down this list and look at just kind of a, a quick summary of each tool. So let's start with a GIS program. And you'll see that I've listed ArcMap and QGIS. I have ArcMap grayed out because it is a commercial platform and it's extremely costly. Um, it's a very effective program. It's perhaps not as 
clean and beautiful as you would expect it to be given how much money we pay for it. Um, but it's a pretty useful program. QGIS is community developed and community driven. It uh, has a huge number of advantages to it. In some things, it's not as mature as ArcMap is, um, but QGIS is a, is a pretty nice um, product and quite usable, especially given that the price tag is zero. So, you know, what these programs do is they allow you to display and explore raster data and vector data and um, pan and zoom and manipulate and reproject and all these things that have to do with maps. And this is probably something that you can't do without. Second thing, which maybe should be first, is R. Um, R is another uh, community developed and community maintained program or platform that uh, allows you to do an immense amount of statistical analysis, uh, but also increasingly people are doing simulations in R um, and they're doing GIS in R. Um, a good programmer in R is seeing um, not just the program code, but also the plots. And so it's very nice because you can essentially see the results of your analyses as you go. Um, and I think that's probably a crucial ingredient that you get good enough that you actually do look at every intermediate product. Because otherwise you may get into trouble and go through a lot of processing steps, having made an error in the first of those processing steps. There are also some R packages now that are much more um, driven conveniently for those of us who don't um, master the program itself. Uh, this, is, this is Niche Toolbox, which we're gonna hear about later in this course. Uh, but essentially, Niche Toolbox is a platform by which you can uh, use a web browser to do many functionalities important in niche modeling. And again, it's pretty easy for those of us uh, who are more on the ignorant side to, to uh, master. And then a final kind of crucial element in your toolkit are the various standalone platforms for certain analyses. You're going to hear about Niche A later in this course, uh, but probably the most famous standalone platform would be that of Maxent. And this is a platform that uh, implements the maximum entropy algorithms that are very, very popular in niche modeling these days. Um, and so, you know, this uh, interface was uh, made available, what, I think 13 years ago and has been remarkably robust and remarkably uh, massively used in science uh, since then. So uh, that kind of rounds out the critical and crucial tools. But then there, I'm going to list four more for you that are things that you probably ought to have. Um, one is a database management platform. Um, there are a bunch of options. Uh, I use Microsoft, Microsoft Access mainly because I learned it 20, 25 years ago and I haven't had time to replace it with something better. It is a commercial software package and so it's unfortunate that it costs money. Uh, but it's also quite well designed. Um, and this is the sort of thing you're going to use when you have uh, tabular data, and especially when you want to perform complex linkages amongst tables. Um, this is a, this is a you know, you're not going to use it every week, but you're going to use it once a month or every other month. Um, some of the functionalities of access, maybe even many of them, can now be done in R. 
but I think it's probably easier to do it in, in access. Again, I'm not arguing against R. I'm just saying that this is a very convenient uh, platform. Another one that's probably the least known in the broader community of these various tools would be Open Refine. And this is a tool for exploring and working with really large data sets. Um, we, we may do another course later on, on um, data cleaning. But I just want to show you this example, show you an example of uh, some of the things that Refine can do that really aren't available anywhere else. So this is just a situation where I wanted to simplify and edit the list of um, localities that are represented in the University of Kansas um, bird data set and the collection data set. And essentially what I did was I pulled in the table of these localities and then I uh, used this cluster and edit functionality. And essentially what this does is under different uh, methods and keying functions, which are essentially different metrics of similarity, um, it searches for similar content. And again, this is something that's not widely available other than in this program. You can see here it found two text strings that are exactly the same, except one is three miles south and one is two miles south of the Arkansas River. Sorry, the Arkansas River, because uh, we're in Kansas. And those are probably localities that I don't want to combine. But uh, look here at this pair, exact same text string, except one has plat um, P-L-A-T-T-E, and the other just as P-L-A-T-T. This one, P-L-A-T-T-T, -T -T, sorry, P-L-A-T-T-E is the correct one. And so I'm very happy to combine those. And same here where you can see Indian Creek is misspelled. And essentially those are things that are genuinely synonymous uh, geographically, but if I treat them separately, it just ends up being more work. So Open Refine is a really unique program. Um, it's not pretty, but it does some pretty amazing things. You also need a platform for handling images and creating figures. Um, I personally, again, this is a, this is a, a commercial platform. I use Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. There are a bunch of other um, options, but essentially you're going to produce some raw images as you um, as you process data in distributional ecology, and you're going to want to add you know, letters and labels and things like that to them, and that's what you're going to use these platforms for. So this has nothing to do with distributional ecology, but here's a figure where I wanted to label some of the points in a graphic, and I wanted to put a circle around some other points and label that. And this is just very easy and convenient to do in these programs. And finally, uh, you probably want some sort of programming language for more complex analyses or simulations. Again, this may not be something you use frequently, or maybe not at all, but you probably should have this, this functionality. Um, this is an example in Python, um, but there are, there are um, there's program code used in science from Fortran and Pascal. And I mean, I learned basic back in the 1970s, but you can probably find something more modern than that. Anyhow, these are, this is just another tool that you will use at some point in your work in this field. So that's my list. And again, I hope that the instructors of this course will uh, chime in with, with their personal lists as well. Um, now, you all know the, the, uh, the Lord of the Rings and the one rule, that, the one ring that, that rules everything else. And wouldn't it be nice if we had 
some software packages that just did everything. And then we could just become experts with those software packages and not worry about the rest of, of this. Well, it doesn't work. Um, there have been a bunch of attempts, and I hate to say this, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but uh, many of these attempts have been places where kind of good ideas go to die. Um, here's an example of, of a very large-scale project that attempted to, to use the Kepler workflow system to uh, make possible ecological niche modeling application. I was a participant in this, in this project and there were some really, really smart people in there. And they or we worked for years on these challenges and it kind of came to nothing. And that's pretty sad. Uh, there was a couple of publications and you can see we, we created a design for a neat analysis which at that point in history would have been really novel. Uh, but it never really worked. Now, there are some newer approaches, uh, newer efforts. Um, later in this course, we're going to hear about at least two of them. Uh, Wallace, which was developed by Rob Anderson's group in, in New York. Um, and this is a really nice platform for reproducible modeling of uh, niches and distributions. Um, or you can see work done by, by uh, Luis uh, Gadelia and his student, Maria Luisa Mondelli, um, essentially trying to build exact and complete reproducibility into some of the analyses that we do. Um, more power to you guys. I love it. I really want this to happen. Um, and you know, it's the sort of thing where sooner or later it will work and it's gonna be really exciting. Just to illustrate for our participants how important this is. How many times have you read a paper and thought, I'd love to do that analysis with my data, or I'd love to do that analysis but change the analysis just a bit. Well, right now, that's a lot of trouble. It's, a, it's very hard to do. Um, and so the question is, can we build platforms that support that sort of truly reproducible science? Up till now, the answer is, well, no. But I think several of these platforms, I'm featuring these two, several of these platforms open the possibility that we may be able to. So uh, again, more power to y'all. Uh, I love it. And anything I can do to help, um, because this is really important stuff. Um, so with that, that's my set of opinions about uh, kind of core programs and, and abilities that you all should build. Um, I hope the other instructors will add to this or dispute parts of it, because I'm sure I'm wrong. Um, but let's, let's see what kind of discussion this engenders. Thanks a lot. And have a good week, everybody.